been a long time. Shouldn't have left you without a dope beat to step to. Been a long time coming. <laughs> it's Scott, Andrew, and hey, if you hear that British mumbling in the background, <laughs> it's Alex. Yeah. There he is. So. Hello. <laughs> so what's going on, everybody? Did you miss us? Yeah, it's been a little while. Have, is this our first recording of 2013? Absolutely. Yeah, the last one we did... Because we did a bunch of holiday shows, right? Yeah. That had nothing did, to do with the holidays. But we did them early, kind of. Yeah, like a week or two before Christmas. Yeah. 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 All right, well... Uh, well we've all had busy times in our lives. Yeah. Happy, happy New Year, everybody. For the record, I, I fucking hate... <laughs> I fucking hate anyone who says Happy New Year past, like, January 3rd. Like, I agree. I agree. We'll deal with, deal with it next year. We we missed it. Well, it's going to come around again, guys. Don't don't get too excited about it. Anyway. So, we got the three of us here. This is, I think this is going to be a primarily uh, Leonard Malton game episode, because we haven't... Uh, we haven't done it in... Because we didn't do it on either of the, the last two? Nope. Yeah. Uh, we did a couple of Would You Bangs. Yeah. Then we did one that was you and I talking about... Yeah. Well, we did the Lincoln one, but that was a little while ago. Yeah. The Link- Lincoln Lawyer. Lincoln Lawyer. Lincoln Lawyer. I don't know why you need to take your shirt off in this courtroom, sir, but... Well, I'm the Lincoln Lawyer. I could say I could say that all day. That's just, that's just fun to say. Ah, Lincoln Lawyer. Did, uh... Is Matthew McConaughey nominated for the Lincoln Lawyer? <laughs> <laughs> he should be. If he's not, they fucked up big time. Screw Ben Affleck being snubbed. It was uh, Matthew McConaughey for Lincoln Law. That was pretty funny, actually. I, g- I guess this will date this podcast, but... Uh, Whatever. Uh, yeah, Affleck wins the Golden Globe, not nominated for the Oscar. That's mm-hmm. pretty... That's unusual, actually. It's very unusual. Yeah. But I still say that, to me, that's not the biggest snub, because I still think Richard Gere should have been nominated for Arbitrage. That's that's a big snub, which I'm just saying, because I agree with you and I haven't actually seen Arbitrage, but I heard it was good. Uh, I think the, I think the biggest snub, uh, the two biggest snubs were Best Picture, uh, Moonrise Kingdom, and The Master, both of which should have easily been nominated. Yeah, I agree. Especially, and the thing, and another thing that I have a major problem with with the Oscars is, uh, when a movie, a picture is nominated for Best Picture, but it's also nominated for Best Foreign Film. You, Doesn't you, it? Shouldn't you, it just win? <laughs> yeah, you automatically know. Like, there's no way it's not winning. Best same, film same, film. same with animated. Yeah, exactly. Like, if, if an animated film is nominated for best picture, if there's then... five films nominated for best animated and only one is nominated for best picture, yeah. doesn't it just win automatically? Yeah. Like it almost seems like if you, it almost seems like if you get nominated for best picture, you should be excluded from best. Yeah. Foreign film. They get, they give you a token Oscar. They give you just Oscar's head. <laughs> yeah. Or they should and, give you the choice, like, do you want to be nominated for Best Picture, because you probably won't win? Or do you want to just win this other bullshit exactly, one? Because, exactly. like, you think of, what was that uh, Roberto Benigni movie, uh, Life is Life Beautiful? Life is Beautiful, yeah. Like, that one won Best Picture, but did it win Best Foreign Film? Because it... It didn't win Best Picture. He won, oh, be- he won Best Actor. Best Sorry, Actor, yeah. yeah. But did it win Best Foreign Film? I don't know offhand. It, I, if, I gotta assume You'd it think it would have. Yeah, you gotta assume it probably did. Yeah. On the British Netflix, um, there's a section for foreign films, and there are American films in there. Oh, really? So, like, well, cause uh... Because it, it's foreign. So, it's, like, so, like... I don't know. I guess technically <laughs> American films are foreign, but... Yeah, they're foreign to you. So, like, Star Wars is a foreign film? <laughs> Well, I, I guess that, that's a bad example because it, it takes place a long, long time ago in a galaxy far, far away. So that would be a foreign film. Every but, podcast I'm on, somebody has to bring up Star Wars. Which is funny because I don't like Star Wars either. I hate it. <laughs> I don't hate it as much as you, but it, I don't like it. <laughs> Not a fan. Yeah. Alex, where do, you sta- where do you stand on Star Wars, Alex? No, uh, where do I stand on Star Wars? Yeah. Uh, For, I, against? <laughs> I, I saw them all, you know, as a child, and they're all really great films when you're a child, so, you know. Yep. I'm talking about the three good ones. Yeah, yeah. The three bad ones. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I, I think, yeah, I think the, th- the three, I think the three good ones are, are fine, and, uh, and the three new ones are among the worst movies I've ever seen. <laughs> yeah. I didn't hate the th- the third one as much towards the end of it. 
when Anakin becomes starts, murdered a bunch of kids, yeah, like when he becomes a bad guy, <laughs> then it's okay. Yeah. But everything before that, and then I was thinking today at work actually. I don't, I don't know. I guess I was listening to the Nerdist with uh, when they had Kevin Smith on, and they were talking about it because obviously Kevin Smith is a huge homo for Star Wars. Oh, I, uh, I thought that sentence was going to end earlier, no, but that's yeah. okay. Um, they were talking about like you know because uh, this was like 2010, so they were talking about like the new movies. They didn't say anything about the newer ones, but then in my head I was thinking immediately like, oh shit. Now what they can do is have young Luke Skywalker do the exact same thing that young Anakin did and ruin three more movies. <laughs> well, apparently, so they're, what's the plan? So they're going to do three, they're doing three movies that take place after, like, chronologically after the, like, after Return of the Jedi. Oh, is that how they're doing it? I think so. Oh, I kind of assumed and, it was between. Oh, between the two? I'm like, now Darth Vader's no, no, no. around Supposedly. until yeah, that's Luke's, me. like, Three trilogies, um, so uh, seven, eight, and nine uh, yeah. take place after, obviously. Yeah, and uh, then I also heard in a. That was supposed to be the plan originally. Like, yeah. Lucas's point of view. Yeah, yeah, I'm just glad Lucas isn't making them because enough. He's he's you're bad at movies, George. Um, he's done some things. That the are fun. Uh, really Howard the Duck. Anyway, <laughs> I like Howard the Duck. <laughs> Uh, was it? Oh yeah, and apparently in addition to seven, eight, nine, they're talking about a a Han Solo spinoff and like a Boba Fett spinoff, and th- but, they're just gonna make Star Wars movies until until we're all dead. I have a question though. Joe has a question. Well, are they doing? Cause like I don't I don't really care, but they're not doing like seventy year old Harrison Ford playing all the- all of these all, all of these set. 70s, 80s Star Wars cast is in the new at least seven. Drew Drew has stood up and left the room. I'm not even joking. <laughs> he became furious when I said that. But yeah, as far as like uh like Mark Hamill, Carrie Fisher, Harrison Ford, they're all signed on for the new stuff. I assume there's going to be new younger characters as well. But um, yeah. No, uh, just the maybe just the old ones. Hey, Drew's back, and he has a. Drew, Drew's back. He has a banana, and he's eating it really angrily and a little suggestively. It was I am outraged. You didn't know that? No. Yeah, they're all in it. Damn it, Harrison Ford! You're better than this. He's gonna make some sweet bank on this. Dude, Leave he's it. he's fine. He's he, living on his ranch. He actually is fine. He's enough. raising his buffaloes. <laughs> he doesn't need this. Ugh. Furious, even more mad now. <laughs> I like, but I will say I am glad that Mark Hamill is getting work again and not just voicing the Joker. He does a lot of voice stuff because he's hitting it. Not a lot of on-screen stuff. See, my thoughts were, well, I'm talking with a banana in my mouth. Um, <laughs> Very professional. My thoughts were that they were going to continue it, so they show the rise of Darth Vader and then they show Luke growing into a right. man. That's what I was under the assumption assumption that those movies were going to be. No, nope. not not old man Luke Skywalker. Yep. You know, fat, hideous face, balding. <laughs> you know, trying to be the the Jedi he once was. Yeah. That's... So I assume that they're going to hire like Liam Hemsworth or something, or Chris <laughs> Hemsworth, one of the Hemsworth brothers, one or both Hemsworths, and then Luke will be his um, his Obi Wan. Obi Wan, like that's yeah. what I assume it will be. Yeah. Yeah. I would, I would assume. Ridiculous. Yeah. Maybe Chris Pine. Oh, man, how about... What if Chris Pine was Captain Kirk and a Skywalker? <laughs> oh, my. What if they get uh, Carrie Fisher in the same Princess Leia outfit now? Uh, can I jerk off already? Because <laughs> she is a hefty lady. <laughs> She's fine. <laughs> She's fine for 60-something, oh, whatever she is. Sure. She's a handsome woman. She's she she's uh she's thick. <laughs> mm-hmm. Oh man, that also means that Billy D. Williams will get some work. Billy D. Yeah, and it won't just be voicing himself on Robot Chicken, <laughs> or cameoing in Modern Family. That's right. Yeah, throw <laughs> yeah, yeah, that. Um, just like to point out. St- would you finish that fucking banana? <laughs> Sorry, of other things that George Lucas did, he also did American Graffiti. So that one, I I I know is good. I haven't seen it. I haven't seen it in a long ass time. But, but that's all he's done. Can we agree that after Return of the Jedi, George Lucas was garbage? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, he also did a movie called THX 1138. 
That, I believe, I think that's just the sound system they well, use. It says Robert Duvall, Donald uh, Pleasant. It's a film, isn't it? Yeah. No, it, it's a film. I was just being stupid. You're just being a butt face. How dare you? <laughs> How dare I? How dare they make more goddamn Star Wars movies? Like they needed more. They should have learned after the last ones. They should have learned after episode one, let alone making three of them. <laughs> See, I don't like any of them, so I can't even say like, yeah. You, first... Like I know you, I know you don't like any Star Wars. Can you recognize like the new three are like much much worse oh, yeah, than absolutely. the old three? Okay. The, uh, <laughs> uh, what's the second one? Clone Wars. Sure. Clone Wars yeah. easily attack or Attack of the Clones. I think Clone Wars was like the TV oh, show. Oh yeah, Attack of the yeah. Clones. That one is easily it's bad in my top ten like the worst movies I've ever seen. <laughs> it's the bad. other one, the first one, the whole the what was the other one called? Phantom Menace. Phantom Menace is really high as well. Of like every bad movie I've ever seen, those two are, are very very high. On the oh list. yeah, they're bad. And the third one's not like it's not like it's not on the list, but it would be a little bit lower down because I didn't hate the end of it. I'd say the third one has a worse moment than either of the first two. Like, the terrible, like, right at the end, mm-hmm. Darth Vader, no. Yeah. Like, that's one of the worst things I've ever yeah, seen. that's true. Like, top, top five, like, comedic, not supposed to be comedic moments. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. Oh, man, I wonder if they're gonna get James Earl Jones to do the voice. Uh, yeah, why not? Oh, he's dead, though. He's dead. Well, yeah, he's dead. Darth Vader, not James Earl Jones, right? <laughs> oh, no, no, no. James Earl Jones is immortal. He'll never die. Okay. Because, yeah, he's he's looked about the same for 30 years. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. He's, he may have gotten a little grayer in the hair. And, yeah. But, yeah, he, he's, he's always been a hefty man. And Yeah. Oh, James Earl. You were in several of my favorite baseball movies. Rookie of the Year? Not in Rookie of the Year. No. Sandlot? <laughs> Field of Dreams? Field of Dreams, yeah. Yeah. Two of my favorite baseball movies. Basketball. I not, wish he was in baseball. That's not, not, not a baseball movie. Also, not in it. <laughs> not in it. That being said, awesome movie. I had to play Six Degrees of Se- of Kevin Bacon with uh, James Earl Jones, and I did Whoa, it in five. When were you with James Earl Jones? Uh, well, a couple weeks ago. <laughs> we were hanging out. All right. Um, and then I will make that joke every time. <laughs> apparently, apparently, there is a a thing on Google now where you can go to Google and put in like. What is so and so's bacon number? And oh yeah, like, it'll tell you it. Nice. So like somebody was, I, I said like I'm pretty good at it because I always have a go to. Yeah. My go to is always a few is, good men. No. No. I'm All saying right. as long as you can get to, as long as I can get to one of um, George Clooney or Brad Pitt, I can always get to Kevin Bacon okay. because I can go. George Clooney was with. Uh, Brad Pitt in any of the Oceans movies. And yeah. Brad Pitt was in Sleepers. Kevin Bacon. Yeah. So as long as and like I feel like George Clooney and Ken Brad Pitt have been in a lot of movies yeah. more than Kevin Bacon has. So I can mm. always as long as I can get to one of those two. Yeah. I can always guess. So anyways, I got James to, from James Earl Jones to Kevin Bacon in five. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, well, it's Kevin. What's James Earl Jones Kevin Bacon m- m- number? It was one because he was in some bullshit direct to DVD animated <laughs> movie with Kevin Bacon. Oh, animated! Like, wow. like two years ago. I'm like, huh. that doesn't count. That's if kind nobody of bullshit. saw it, yeah. it doesn't count. I don't think direct direct to DVD. If seven year olds have seen it, it's not a real movie. <laughs> yes. Fact. Sorry, if only seven year olds have seen it, yeah. it's not a real movie. Fuck that. Mm-hmm. But I'm pretty good at it. I'm pretty good at six, yeah. six movies. I, I would say a, a Few Good Men is kind of my go-to, because that gives you uh, Tom Cruise and Jack Nicholson, mm-hmm. and a couple others. So that, that one's not bad. Um, yeah, and, and Sleepers is good, too, because there's, there's a few folks in Sleepers. Yep, yep. That's uh, like... That's like all those guys right, bef- like right around the time they started to get popular. Yeah. Like, uh, freaking Jason Patrick, Brad Pitt. I guess Kevin Bacon was already into his popular... Yeah, yeah. ...ness. Uh, who else? There's other... Uh, there are others. Is, uh... Robert Sean Leonard? Maybe? No, he's in Swing Kids. I'm is, con- uh... I'm confusing Swing Kids with <coughs> Sleepers. Yeah, there's definitely a few other there's some bigger... names in Sleepers. I have it, I don't want to get up. Yeah. Is Christian Slater or am I crazy? Oh, maybe, actually. He might be. Uh, Red Pitt, Brad Renfro, Billy oh, Crudup. De-, De Niro. Yeah, Billy Crudup and Ron Eldard. Yeah. 
Well, yeah, but De Niro's not one of the kids. I meant like one of the. Oh no, no, but I was just, the I, kids. Yeah, yeah, I was just thinking people who were in there. Yeah, because De Niro and Hoffman are both in it. Yeah. Mini Driver, who might have actually been hot in this movie had she not had her stupid Bronxy New Yorky whatever the hell. What are you talking about? Yeah, she has one of those terrible accents in it. But I guess enough about uh, Kevin Bacon and <laughs> sleepers. Uh, we yeah. What what topics have we? Got? We have Star Wars and Kevin Bacon. At least we're sticking to movies and not body hair. Oh, that's that's fun though. <laughs> that, that was fun. <laughs> Um, so, yeah, today will be the seventh person to host his own category on, uh, Leonard Malton, because Alex has, uh, has, did you purchase the book, or did you get the book as a present? I saw the book in a bookshop, and thought, I'm having some of that. No. <laughs> I'm having some of that. <laughs> that is the correct thing to have some of. Can't argue with that. Is it the 2012-2013 movie guide? 2013. 2013. Love it. Yeah. So I'll be flicking through pages manually, and uh, yeah, I've got them all written down for the page numbers, so that shouldn't take too long. Good stuff. <laughs> I've just. <laughs> I've just been watching Drew Drew search on the Leonard Malton app. The last four words he has searched for have been fuck. Ass, jugs, and cock. <laughs> I, I wanted to see what movies came up. <laughs> Nothing came up for fuck. A bu- for uh, ass, a bunch of assassination stuff came up. For cock, cocktail came up. <laughs> <laughs> There's a few cock movies. Sadly, no jugs the movie. <laughs> Only thing for balls is balls of fury. Hugs? <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> okay, what have you stumbled across? Some Matthew Lillard movie called Spooner. What did, were you searching for? Spoon? Spoon. <laughs> yeah, I don't think anything's going to come up for Splooge. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Enough of Drew is an asshole, the movie. <laughs> Which I would watch. I would watch 90 Minutes of Drew being an asshole. That's every day. That is every day. If, yeah, I have watched 90 Minutes of Drew being an asshole. You've watched, like, 390 way, way, minutes. Way more minutes than that. <laughs> um, yeah, okay, so... Uh, so Drew, Drew's got categories, Alex has categories. I don't, because I'm a pussy, apparently, according to Drew. Well, to be fair, we were not entirely sure what our evening was going to uh, partake, so... Yeah, there's a lot... A lot going on. It is the Vancouver Comedy Festival going on right now, so there's a lot of shows going on, and uh, some of those shows are getting sold out, and so it's hard to know which shows we can actually get into. And the one we thought we were getting into at 8 o'clock tonight, we are not getting into, so we got all night to record things and then uh, jerk each other off after recording things. Not during? Eh, I feel like it distracted us from the recording last time. That's fair. (laughs) Uh, we were supposed to see a Canadian comedian named John Doerr, who I don't know if anybody would recognize him, like, because he's, he... the things he's in are, like, super obscure things. Yeah, he's done some, like, he's done some movies that nobody knows. He's done stand-up on, like, late-night shows. Yeah, he's true. been on, like, Conan and stuff. Um, he's, uh, I feel like he's done something on a, some sitcom, but I couldn't tell you what. And, uh, and he's the host of... Uh, the HBO stand-up series Funny as Hell, which they record at the right. Montreal Comedy Festival. Right. Which... He's very good. I've seen him. I've seen him live once, and he was a funny gentleman. Yeah. Yeah. We watched. Did he review? Uh, did he review guys to see uh, the Comedy Bang Bang show in Vancouver? I'm. Uh, which one? Was there one recently? I've seen someone the date one in Vancouver. There was one in August, and there's one tomorrow. One when? What happened? When? That, there, was, there was one this past August, and there's one tomorrow that I'm going to. Oh, tomorrow. Are yeah. you going to that one? Yeah, me, uh, Kelly and I are going. Sweet. Yeah, should be good. It's I think the only people announced are... Uh, uh, Scott Ackerman, obviously, and uh, Paul F. Tompkins. I don't know if they're adding more people or, or if uh, Scott and Paul are just going to shoot the shit. And probably Paul as a character. 
I would be good. I yeah, would have gone. Just, uh, find that accessible. Yeah, I would have gone if I don't have some bullshit family birthday stuff, and if James Adomian was going to be there as Jesse Ventura, <laughs> because he—that was the greatest <laughs> listen of my life. Uh, which which one? Him uh, doing uh, when he was doing Sk- Skrillex. Skrillex. Yeah. yeah, that was the greatest like time of my life. Was that uh, was that a Bang Bang or a Sklarbro? I that can't remember. Was... That was a... Doug Glows Movies, wasn't it? Oh, it was a Doug. Yeah, it was DR. Oh, okay. A, li- a live Doug. Okay. Yeah, that yeah. was great. Right. That was just the most wonderful thing. It's it's pretty fantastic. He, yeah, he's really good at that. Yeah, I, we still gotta, one of us is gonna have to break down and buy a Domian's album, because I can't find it for download anywhere. Well, you're not looking hard enough. Hear that, James? We're gonna pay ten whole dollars for your album, and we never pay for shit. I technically paid for a Bill Burr album because I got an iTunes card for Christmas and didn't know what to do with it. Ah, there you go. So I didn't pay for it. My Somebody paid, paid for, it. for it. Money was exchanged. Yes. Bill Burr received money from me. I'm okay with Bill Burr receiving money. Bill Burr is a funny fucking guy. Yes, he is. But he's also a ginger fuck. He is also a ginger fuck. <laughs> Just like Seth Green, whose birthday it is today. Happy birthday, Seth Green. Also, the Big Show's birthday today. Happy birthday, Big Show. He... Do, if you, do you have a fucking Big Show category? No, because there's only two of these, and one of them no one saw. <laughs> What, what, what? Okay, oh, three. I, uh, three. I went to Luke's house uh, a few weeks ago, Sam Dog, and he's got a ridiculous collection of wrestling DVDs, and he's just building a Blu-ray collection, which includes uh, the Blu-ray of Knucklehead. <laughs> <laughs> did you did you immediately punch him in the mouth upon seeing Bl- <laughs> Knucklehead on Blu-ray? Uh, I did uh, immediately question it, and... He said it was cheap, but I still don't think that's a good reason to play it. <laughs> like, the, the only way I can see that playing out is... It, it, anyone, you or anyone else friends with Luke in that situation, going there, seeing the aforementioned Blu-ray, and going, oh, we are no longer friends. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but that time, I, it was, uh, my, my train wasn't until a few days later, so I couldn't make it to... Oh, uh, so you got to sort of play that one. Okay, I'm with you. <laughs> Is he is is Luke <laughs> is Luke still in Wales or is he in Norway? He's in Wales. He's going to Norway in a few weeks. Okay. Don't know where he's taking his Blu-ray collection with him though. Hmm. I think well, at least one he should leave at home. <laughs> yeah, at least one. See, I'm okay. I... Wait, because he has an amazing Blu-ray collection. Like he has all these amazing like. Steel books and rare things and all this like shells and shells of it, and then he just has to spoil it. Just to go and bring bring down the resale value of the collection with Knucklehead. Well, yeah. I'm glad I don't get judged like that. You do, but silently. But silently, <laughs> for sure. Um, I forget what I was gonna say, but uh, it was not that important. I I'm going to. Uh, allow as the guest, Alex, I will allow you to decide if you would like to host first or second. Ooh. It's like the coin toss uh, of the Super Bowl. Uh, why don't you, uh... <laughs> you okay? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is the This is the toughest decision he's ever had to make in his life. Do I host first or do I host second in a game that means nothing? First world problems. <laughs> I'll go. Oh, d- 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 we don't want to twist your arm. <laughs> oh, I'll go. Fine. I don't even like this. <laughs> so I don't really have a, uh, a good uh, a name for this. Uh, so I'll just say it was convoluted way possible. This is movies which were shot in the neighborhood where I work. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> That's a great category. To give you more context on that, I work in the city of Manchester in an area called the Northern Quarter, which has uh, got a lot of history and uh, old buildings and old like mills and factories and things like that. Hmm. So okay. It's quite a trendy area. Uh, so if you lived here, then you'd probably get these quite easily, but I'm and, guessing you will not. And also, if you lived here, you'd be home by now. Sorry, didn't hear that. 
I said, oh, <laughs> I, I love I love repeating a joke. It, it's it's so good the second time. Um, I said, I said, and also if you lived here, you'd be home by now. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> anyway, okay. Worth it. <laughs> Alrighty, I am going first because I said so. You, you can do whatever you want. Drew's shooting me a dirty look and perhaps a dirty word. <laughs> I'm watching basketball behind your head. How am I giving you a dirty look? I don't know. I didn't appreciate it. Um, 2009, please. Oh, you did? Let me just find that page. God help him if he did not bookmark these pages. I am coming through the uh, Skype and killing him. The old internet punch. I, nope. I am right there. There we go. Yeah. No, no, no. So here we go. 2009. Uh, 2009. You, you can go whatever you want. You can go... Uh, we've got year... Uh, you can go stars, uh, excerpts from the review, and then number of actors. Seven. I'll say six. I'll say five. I will say Scott Henson name it. All right. Five of seven. Five of seven names. All right. I feel okay about this. Okay, so I'm giving you five names from the bottom end. Yep. Yeah. Drew just slapped me in the face. <laughs> you bet. You bastard. <laughs> Rachel McAdams and some overproduced claptrap. Can you uh, can you be the review stuff again? Holy crap! Really? Shut up, Drew. A minute to win it. Okay. Uh, it is. Murky, noisy, overproduced claptrap. Uh, annoying in the extreme. Unintelligible at times. Gets better in the second half as a natural story emerges. Hmm. Overuse of editing and CGI effects is deadening. Hmm. All right. It's probably not The Notebook. Are you just thinking of Rachel McAdams movies? Yes, I am. <laughs> it's probably not The Hot Chick. Uh, I feel like I should know this, but nothing's coming. Uh, shit. I know what it is. Drew knows what it is. Everyone's really happy for him. Oh, especially me. Especially Drew. Uh, yeah, I'm not gonna get it. Alex, is the movie Sherlock Holmes? Bing, bing, bing. Ah, that seems like, that's a movie I haven't seen. <laughs> yeah. And didn't know Rachel McAdams was in it. She's the female lead. And I, Mark Strong is the villain. I definitely could have got it with seven. Me? Well, yeah, obviously. <laughs> So what uh, is it, no nobody's it, nobody seems to be impressed by that that I could have got that with seven. Set in England, starring Robert Denny Jr. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, point for me. I wish I wish I knew more people who were in Sherlock Holmes besides the two leads. All right. That was a good review, though. I enjoyed this review. Yeah, he actually, yeah. He actually gave good things for it. Yeah. Fuck you, anyway. poop face. Uh, so, so one, nil to Drew. one nil to Drew, and Drew told me to name it, so I'm picking again, right? Is that how it yep. goes? Yeah. I don't know. 
<laughs> Not my intestines. <laughs> Visual comedy. Love it. Yeah, Drew and I were doing a skit. <laughs> for, <laughs> for no one. For each other. Alright, what do we got for the next one? It's a crowd. It's a... Uh, Drew categories. Oh, what? what? You're. We need more from you. Uh, oh, you want more from me? Yeah. yeah you play best of three. So, Verse of three. So, so, so flattering. Okay. <laughs> uh, would you like to hear uh, some other categories? Absolutely. Okay. So we have um, movies with Simpsons actors in them. Okay. And movies featuring penguins. <laughs> uh, I want penguins. <laughs> Good choice. So we ha- this, these might be quite obvious, but uh, we'll see. I really uh, hope you give me the one I want. <laughs> okay. 1964. 1992. 1992. 1999. 1992. It, it, okay. It's the one I want. Really obvious. <laughs> <laughs> I hope it's That's not. Fine. You, uh, uh, is there anything, uh, that you're really excited to read in the review, or can I just bid? <laughs> I don't want to, st- I don't want to step on your toes. I don't think there's anything amazingly, uh, so two stars. Uh, Disagree with that star rating, by the way. As do I. Twelve Bane's nasty minimalistic nightmare movie. That's quite a good description. Wait, this isn't March of the Penguins. <laughs> or Farce of the Penguins. <laughs> <laughs> Rich performances, dazzling production design, and occasional cleverness can't make up for a dark, mean-spirited, and often often incoherent screenplay. Hmm. So, uh, start bidding in the minuses. <laughs> Minus one. Minus two. I wonder if I want to just count on you getting the order wrong. Because it's kind of a toss-up. And Leonard is often drunk when he orders the actors. Yes, he is. As noted by my favorite example, Tommy Lee Jones as the lead in No Country for Old Men. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Which is retarded. Sometimes he puts it in, though, based on, like, a lot of different things. Like, like how famous they are. Yeah, or, like... Or, like... It's because it's not always screen good, time. How good he thought they were in the movie. Yeah, it's it's very weird. So, uh, do we go minus three? I certainly know who the three are. It's just a matter of the order of two and three. Ah, fuck. <laughs> minus three. I think I'm... Oh, yeah, I'm going to try minus four. Name it! Oh, my God. Uh, the movie is Batman Returns. Oh, that's not what I thought it was at all. For, for I, the Penguins? I thought it was... <laughs> I uh, thought it was... Uh, what's that? Surf's Up? Is that a thing? That's a good one. I like that one. Happy Feet? <laughs> happy Feet, Happy Feet 2. Surf's Up 2, Happy Feet? It was a, was that a confu- those, are, those are all one movie. Was that a confusing subtitle for Surf's Up 2? Yes. <laughs> um, yeah, Batman Returns. Uh, Michael Keaton, Michelle Pfeiffer, at the Pied Pfeiffer on uh, the Pied on Twitter. <laughs> Pfeiffer, um, Danny DeVito, and I'm gonna say Jack Palance is fourth. Tell him he's wrong, Alex. He's wrong. Yay! What's the actual four? Would you like the correct order? Would love it. The correct order is Michael Keaton, Danny DeVito. I knew it. Leonard hates women. That's true. He does. I, w- I was going to say DeVito, Parker. yeah. And Christopher Walken. Oh, Chris Walken. Chris Walken, fuck. And is, is Paul Rubens in there somewhere? Uh, let me just reopen the page. Oh, sorry. <laughs> is Jack Palance even in that one, or is he in the first one? I think he's in the first one. Uh, well, you 
Rock's name out, sorry. Paul Rubens. Pee Wee Herman. Pee Wee Herman. Yeah, he's, he's the last egg. Okay. So Alrighty, one apiece. Are we playing to? So t- are we playing to? Piece. Are we playing to two or three? He's got enough categories. You can play to three. Yeah, we'll go to three. I have a last category, which is Simpsons actors in movies. <laughs> I have seven titles here, so. Alrighty, and pick. Drew is picking. Okay, so we have. In no particular order, 1998. First one. 1993, 1984. 2004, 1999, 1995, and 2003. So basically pick any year between 1984 and 2003, and it will probably have a film in it. I know which one I want, and I really hope Drew picks it, because I think I know it. Simpsons actors. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, Alex, can you repeat the, the numbers? <laughs> 98, 93, 84, 04... 99, 95, 03. I would like to choose 99. Ah! One away from what I wanted. I want a 98. <laughs> Say sixteen. Twelve. Ten. Nine. Eight. Name it. Shoot. Okay. The bottom half. Eddie. Are you ready? Yep. Okay. Eddie is out. Hmm. No it. Louise Lassa. Mm. Uh, Ricky J. Jennifer Lewis. Tom Waits, uh, Wes Duty, Study, I don't know. Wes Duty. Yeah. Duty. I knew it that easier. And, uh, how many more have we got left? Two? Sure, I already know what it is, so you Dr- can stop at any time. Drew knew it after the first name, because he's a bastard. Here's the thing. People may may not know this about me, but I am a huge fan of Eddie Izzard. I know you are. So as soon as I heard his name, I immediately knew what movie it was. <laughs> it is the... Is the movie in question Mystery Men? It is. Good job. At first I was thinking, it's Mystery Men, I'm going negative one. And I was like, no, I'll just go 16 and see how far it goes until Scott tells me. <laughs> and the well Sim- Simpsons actor in that movie is... Hank Azaria, Hank Azaria. as the Blue Raja. Blue Raja. The Blue Raja. Would you like enough? to uh, guess the lead of that film? Ben Stiller? Yeah, I would go no. Stiller. No? Stiller is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. William, Fuck William H. Macy. Me. Macy? No. No? Uh, Garofalo? It's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Where's Ginny Garofalo? Uh, th- 3. And, and what's Hank? The lead. Hank is the lead. <laughs> really? <laughs> I don't know if that's accurate. And who's who's second? Jeffrey Rush? Uh, Claire Filani. Oh, Claire Filani. Yeah, okay. And Jeffrey Rush must be four then? Rush has got to be fourth then. Greg Kinnear is... Oh, yeah, oh Kinnear, 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 yeah, yeah. Yeah. Greg Kinnear is the... Uh... Nine. Wow. I really like so, that movie, by yeah, the way. I'm, I'm kind of, I was hoping that um, someone would go minus on that and just... 
Yeah, and just totally. I would yeah. I would and got, fuck it up immediately. I would have been Stiller. I would have been one hundred percent Ben Stiller. I would have said Stiller too. Yeah, no question. Only because he's uh, Macy, but yeah, no. I'm he's not. like, isn't he's on the center of the cover of the movie? Yeah, isn't yeah, he? yeah. he's yeah. not even like the main focuses are on like William H Macy. Yeah. Gene Garofalo. Yeah. And then Greg Kinnear, I guess, are like the main three main yeah. focuses. And not Hank Azaria. <laughs> not Hank Azaria. No. One of those films where it's like so many big stars and yeah. Yeah. Like an ensemble yeah. kind of thing. So I guess what, what did Leonard give it? Two and a half? Uh, yeah, two and a half. It's okay. I would have given it a three. I give it a three. Yeah. Uh, very, a very early uh, cameo role in that movie from Scott's favorite comedian, Dane Cook. He's the Waffler. He is the Waffler, and I don't think he's my favorite comedian. <laughs> Second favorite? Behind Jeff Dunham? Uh, which <laughs> which order are we going up the list? Uh, top to bottom. Uh, oh. So the... it goes Jeff Dunham, Dane Cook. Uh, Ron James. Cat, Cat Williams. Cat Williams, Ron James. Ron James. Yeah. Oh, boy. Also has a wonderful uh, Smash Mouth song in the uh, soundtrack. As did every song in 1999. That's true. <laughs> case, case, case in point, Rat Race. <laughs> Rat Race. Rat Race is another one where you could probably get the uh, order really, really Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Totally. I, I don't even know who I would say for first on that one. Rowan Atkinson. <laughs> I, I was going to say Whoopi. Yeah, who knows? Leonard will know. Leonard will know. Yeah, look it up. Look, look it up right now, Drew, Drew's looking up. It's so much easier to get to do that. Yeah. Number one, Whoopi Goldberg. Number two, John Lovitz. Number three, Rowan Atkinson. Number four, Cuba Gooding Jr. Then John Cleese is fifth. Then a bunch of bullshit who people who nobody gives a fuck about, <laughs> including Brecken Meyer, Amy Smart, Seth Green, Wayne Knight, Kathy Bates, Dean Cain. Have I'm gonna exa- I'm gonna say this one more time. Dean Cain is in this Dean movie. Dean Cain. Have uh, Have Breck and Meyer and Seth Green ever done something separately? <laughs> no. uh, or... Breck and Meyer's is John in the Garfield movies. Ah, I should still not watch those. I've seen both. They are horrible. <laughs> You've seen both. You've seen two. A Tale of Two Kitties. Yep. Because Billy Connolly's in it, and I love <laughs> Billy Connolly. Huh. Yeah, I, I know. I know the titles. That <laughs> I still haven't seen them. <laughs> The, uh, the travesty, of course, of Rat Race is the fact that the DDP scene did not make the final film. Yes. <laughs> what a shame. Giving Cuba Gooding Jr. a, a diamond cutter in Black Rose. <laughs> that would be fantastic to see. <laughs> Alright, so it's 2-1 for me. Drew's up 2-1. Yeah. And Drew picks. Yes. Yes, I pick. So, uh, do you want to go for another category, or? Uh, no, I'll go with uh, I'll go with filmed in in Manchester. Okay, sure. So we've got ninety two, two thousand eleven, and two thousand four. I'll take two thousand four. Okay. Two and a half stars. Ten names. Um, The lead is saucy. Uh, The women are well cast, but it doesn't add up to much. (laughs) (laughs) It's a remake, uh, so... And the remake... No, the original was darker and more misogynistic. <laughs> so it was made in the 60s. When everything was darker <laughs> and more misogynistic. Maybe. Hmm. I think you said 10, didn't you? Uh, no. Uh, I'm counting nine now. Oh, okay. Uh, I'll say I'll say nine. I'll I'll, s- I will say eight. I will say seven. I will say. Uh, what you're making sounds? I'm making sounds because I kind of once. You <laughs> bastard. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah, I was wrong the first time with ten. All right. right. So I say ten. Scott says nine. I say eight. I say seven. Oh, 
7 of 10. Not to be confused with the Borg, who is 7 of 9. Uh, seven. Jerry Ryan. I will take 6. I will take... Name it! I kind of figured that was coming. Okay. I hope Eddie Izzard oh, isn't in this movie. <laughs> How do I even say his name? Uh, get Watanabe. Ken Watanabe, yeah. Okay, right, right. Dick Latessa. Renee Taylor. Uh, Susan Sarandon. Ooh, babe. Uh, C- uh, Sienna Miller. Jane Krakowski. Hmm. Jane Krakowski is in Manchester. Not what I thought it was going to be. No. Is it 30 Rock the movie? Before it was... Before it existed. Did Jane Krakowski know something we didn't? (laughs) Uh, This is all you, Drew. Oh, man. Uh, Yeah, man, that's tough. Um, I'm trying to think of what Ken Watanabe's been in that isn't... Letter C with Jima oh, and Inception. I was just going to say, oh, it's Inception. <laughs> and uh, Last Samurai. Yeah, I don't think I'm going to get it. I, I kind of had one in my head that I thought was right, but and it wasn't it. Ain't that. Give us, uh, give us some more names and we'll see if we can hammer it out. Okay. Uh, Nia Long. Nope. Omar Epps. Marissa Tomei. And Jude Law. Oh. Uh, what's the Jude Law thing? Um, it's... You were right about the, uh, being a remake from a 60s movie. Yeah. It's... I, uh, I can fucking see it. Something with the actor Go? Again, nah, it's the, uh... It's the Jude Law thing that's like the talented... Oh, cool. It's the Jude Law thing that's like the talented Mr. Ripley, but not... If it's the one I'm thinking of, but I can't remember the goddamn name for the life of me. You're probably just going to have to tell us. <laughs> okay, so the original was from 1966 and starred Michael Caine. Michael Caine. And Alfie. Oh, ah. Alfie. Son of a bitch. Yeah. Good call. Oh, I'm Michael Caine. I'm Michael Caine. That is exactly what I do not do. <laughs> I do not sound like that when I say it. I do oh, not sound. Sa- <laughs> I like that my uh, that my Rob Bordson sounds exactly like a really bad accent. <laughs> like that's how I do him. <laughs> so tight at two. Exactly like a terrible accent. I'm a man the box. Tight at two. Sudden death. Yeah. Is this what it's come to? Yep. This is exciting. Now I get to pick again. Listeners on the edges of their proverbial and literal seats. I'm leaning back. I'm relaxed, bruh. I'm... Uh, you, you, Drew, for those who aren't me and Drew and can't see us... So Drew, after, Drew so, and I. So everyone. Drew and I. Thank you, Drew. <laughs> the man who doesn't use your right. <laughs> uh, Drew is... Drew appears much more relaxed and at ease with this game than I. I I, I, am, I am hunched over, I'm stressed, my shoulders are forward, and Drew is just leaning back in his chair, legs crossed Indian style, like, without a care in the world. So, if you're if you're a betting man... Keep picking it. <laughs> exactly. If, uh, if you're a betting man, uh, your, your money's probably better spent on Drew at this point. Um, right. Yeah. And Drew is picking. You can, Alex, pick pick whatever you want. Which are ah, one? dealer's choice. I dealer's love it. Dealer's choice. Whatever one you want, let's do it. Okay. You ever notice that him and Kelly make the exact same noises when they're thinking? <laughs> it's great. <laughs> they they need a uh, a soundtrack to their thinking. And Kelly always does this. <laughs> yeah. When he's thinking, like Kelly, that's not good for a podcast. People can hear you making mouth noises. <laughs> Well, if he had another way to think, he would do it. But that's all he's got. And if he wasn't so white. <laughs> Goddamn whiteies. You see, day. white people drive like this. Do do do. Oh dear. I'm just gonna look through uh, a review here and see if it's entertaining enough. Uh, all right. 
You know what's fucked up? Since we're on the sort of the topic of Simpsons references and Simpsons movies being a category, there are at this point probably more Simpsons episode I haven't seen than I have seen. Well, yeah, because you haven't seen the last like what That's eight crazy. years, twelve yeah, seasons like, probably. Yeah. Like, and I used to watch it religiously. You don't, I, I you don't had, need to. Okay, I know. I know I don't need to, and that's why I stopped. But like, I had seen every episode, and they were pretty much all good. And I don't know. What has happened to the world? Seen, you hadn't seen the episode where, where Homer and Mr. Burns get trapped in the cabin? I've seen it. I didn't remember it specific. Oh, I didn't okay. remember who the... And what, then remember he has like his, What the reference was. Uh, uh, Mr. Burns has the uh, the snowmen that are dressed like the SS. Oh, yeah. I've, uh, I've yeah. absolutely seen it. Oh, okay, yeah. But I was like... I thought, yeah, so yeah. no. I, I just didn't know what movie reference it was. After. And I still didn't... After you told me, some, yeah, Hass- it, some Hasselhoff avalanche Michael bullshit. Michael Gross, David Hasselhoff... Yeah. And they're in a cabin that gets buried in an avalanche. Yeah. And he's a... Uh, Dale Hasselhoff is a serial killer who escapes from prison, falls out of a helicopter, and the helicopter crashes and causes the avalanche. Hmm. And that's how he gets there. And, awesome. And Michael Gross has kids in it, and I don't remember who the kids are. Huh. They're, but they're actors that we would reasonably uh, tolerate in films. I'm going to say Seth Green. <laughs> it might be Seth Green. Seth Green and Juliette Lewis, because she did all those kind of movies. Yeah. And she's completely unfuckable. The year is nineteen ninety five. And which category is this? This is Simpsons okay. and in movies. Okay. The rating is three and a half stars. Oh, wow. a good one. Really like this one. We have Sweet <laughs> Christ. <laughs> Alright, tell me about it. A, a fascinating, multi layered character study studied with gripping and often violent action scenes. Over length is the only criticism of this crackerjack contemporary drama. Wow, so over length took it down a whole half a star. Huh, but it is crackerjack. So. That's worth something. <laughs> huh. Alright, well, I'll say 20 to start it off, because why not? I will say 18. 16. 15. Name it. Alright, 15 of 20. Ball is in my court. For the win. Or loss. I kind of feel like an asshole if I don't get this. This is a lot of names. Well, let's see. There we go, 15 names. Jeremy Piven, Tone Locke, Henry <laughs> Rollins, Hank Azaria, Kevin Gage, Tom Noonan, Natalie Portman, William Fitchner, Dennis Haysbert, Ted Levine, Wes Studi, Mike Letty Williamson, Ashley Chud, Amy Brenneman, Diane Venora. That's that's the fifteen. That's the fifteen. Fuck. Is it me or is Hank Azaria and West Studi even? I was gonna say, do Hank Azaria and West Studi do everything together? Are they the Breckenmeyer and (laughs) and Seth Green? West Studi is probably I'm gonna say the most well known Native American actor. Like Graham Greene's pretty well known, but West Studi does all the serious roles. Yeah. Like West Studi did Dance with Wolves. He did Last Mohicans. He did Mystery Man. <laughs> All right. His, his character was the Pharaoh, I believe. Yeah, I think that's right. Yeah. Okay, so 95, three and a half stars. What's going on in 1995? What did McKelty Williamson do after Forrest Gump? Yeah. So, and there was some violence we heard, and some overlink. And, hey, you're uh, gay for Henry Rollins, think. Yeah, Henry Rollins, Tone Loke. Henry Rollins is pretty badass. What was he... What the hell was he doing? Huh. Um... Ninety-five. And Hank Azaria. All in minor roles. What kind of... And some violence. And uh, character study came up? Or something with character? Sorry. Uh, Character study oh, or something? Multi-layered character study. Multi-layered character study. 
Huh. Uh, an over length, but three and a half stars. Some violent. I uh, uh, I'm not real confident, but the best I got is the English patient. I don't like that sound. No. No. Uh, let's get. Uh, like carry on with names. Uh, carry on with names. Okay. Tom Sizemore. Huh. John Voigt. Val Kilmer. Here's where you're gonna start to get it. Robert De Niro. Heat. <laughs> I yeah. went on heat. Damn it. Looks like it's a little bit of Sunday night heat for me. God damn it. Yeah, I probably should have got that too. I haven't seen it, but I do know those people, so. I probably should see it. You, 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 saw, you saw it, right, Drew? Um, kind of recently, actually. Yeah. It's good, right? Yeah, it's, uh, it's. You know what? It is It is very long. Like, there's yeah. definitely a lot they can cut out, but uh, Val Kilmer is wonderful in that movie because he is such a creep. <laughs> Like, he is in every movie. <laughs> and possibly the last, like, legitimately good Al Pacino? What did you... Well, no, he did to, to me, he did Any Given Sunday. Any, Any Given Sunday is a good movie. I don't know how great Al Pacino is in it. I think he's alright. Because he's, he's playing an old, washed-up coach. Who yells. Is, and he's now an old, washed-up actor who I guess, wears a toupee. I guess it plays to his strengths, yeah. He was also really good in that uh, mini series. Uh, you don't know Jack, the Jack the Kevorkian, Kevorkian thing. One? He was yeah. actually really good in that. But yeah, I won with Heat. God damn it! Yay! It's infuriating. Celebrate good times. Now I have to. Come on. Now I have to just decimate Alex to redeem my honor. Yeah. All right, so I have these all loaded up on my computer, which means Scott can't look. All right, I'll move. Well, just. Don't look at the screen, oh, you you oh, cunt face. I'm gonna lie down and do this. <laughs> what is it, you cunt face? <laughs> Can't believe that didn't make Kelly more mad than it should have. <laughs> okay, uh, my we'll start off with Alex, I guess, because he's yep. new. Okay, uh, Alex, uh, celebrating a birthday today is the legendary f- cinematic. Um, composer uh, John Williams. So, uh, movies where John Williams composed the score for. That's a lot of stuff. Exactly. Um, <laughs> That's like every movie. <laughs> practice doesn't always make perfect, which is uh, movies where a stunt person was killed during the filming. Uh, and... Ferris Bueller's Clothes Off, which is movies where uh, Matthew Broderick has a shower scene. <laughs> okay. Let's um, open it up broad and say John Williams. Oh, oh boy. John freaking Williams. Would Would you like a John Williams movie from... Yes, please. Uh, <laughs> Wait for it. 1993... 2011 or 1979? Um, 75. Okay, so you can sit back up. Alright. Here. Quit fucking around. Well, it freaking. It didn't take me this long, and I've got a book. I'm sorry, <laughs> the whole thing. I don't know what it is. <laughs> Alex, bring in the attitude. Uh, okay, let's see what we got. Here. The book is available for all good bookstores. <laughs> good plug. You know what the funny thing is that that would be the only book I would probably ever, uh, like I would have read in the last, God knows how long. Yeah. And if someone breaks into your house, you can throw it at them. It's got some. It's got some weight to it. Oh. It's I, got a bit of weight. It's it is a soft back, so it probably wouldn't kill them. I uh, 
may or may not have, uh, have uh, written down the uh, wrong year for this uh, this certain movie that I was trying to pick. Good, uh, good job. Is it actually 1976? Uh, it is actually 1975. Okay. I'm okay. I'm okay with this turn of events. <laughs> I don't know why I wasn't paying attention to what I was doing when I wrote it down. Here, but... here's something that almost worries me. When, uh, when you said the year, I thought of what movie I think it is. But I thought to myself, that's not the right year, and yet I still think it's that movie. Drew must have got the year wrong. <laughs> you know why? Because I meant to write down 1997, not <laughs> 79. Ah. So you've messed up twice. Yes. Yes. On, um, on multiple fronts. So, so are we going with 1975? Yeah, your, your options are... Yeah. No, I, I meant, I meant uh, 97. So oh, okay. So your choices are now, Alex, are 97, 93, and 2011. Uh, this is a whole new ballgame. Uh, uh, 97. Can we have 75 back in the mix? Because I'm pretty sure I know what that is. That's why I didn't pick it. Damn it. it's too ridiculously easy. <sighs> okay, this movie is three stars. Um, Zero names. Jaws. Can I, I get... I want points for Jaws, damn it. Three, three stars. I... It's a number. I don't know that I agree with it, but it's a number. Okay. Um, he says about this movie that it is uh, the main actor is excellent it's a difficult character because he is selfish and arrogant um, and it is magnificently filmed hmm. and it has two, four, six, seven actors I go first yep. yep seven six five hmm Interesting play. <laughs> um, what did you, no. Do I make you name it with five? Yeah, I'll make you name it with five. Well, I think this may have been a mistake from Drew's reaction. Here are your five names, Alex. Oh my god, how do I even say this? Jam Yang, Jatsu, Wang Chuk. Sounds right. Victor Wong, Danny Denzungapa. The legendary Mako, mm -hmm. and B. D. Wong, B. D. Wong of Law and Order SVU fame, absolutely, yeah. and Mako of uh, being a shark fame. <laughs> Mako, I believe Mako of, was in Jaws. Uh, Conan the Barbarian, yeah, and other such Mako related things. Yeah. Well, there seems to be a theme with these actors, Alex. I'm gonna leave it uh, leave it up to you. <laughs> Correct. Very, very Eastern Russian. <laughs> yes. Uh, hmm. Mako also... What's the uh, description again? The, uh... I accidentally went to Mako's page instead of this. <laughs> um, he said that the, the main actor is excellent in his role because it is a difficult character... Oh, no, sorry. Yeah, a difficult character because he is selfish and arrogant, uh, and he says that it is magnificently filmed. Don't know that that overly helps as much, but here we are. There's a bunch of names that I don't know. That all have something in common. <laughs> they are all bad that, drivers. By John Williams. Yes, it is. What kind of Starring these kinds of people, did John Williams do a score for? Mm -hmm. I don't really have anything in my head right now. Oops. If I'm honest. Well, we do appreciate honesty on this show. There are no stupid guesses, uh, only stupid people. Well, I, I fear I may be a stupid person. <laughs> uh, I'm just going to say, uh, 
but it can't be because it's, it wasn't made. See, how the, the names are throwing me off with the fact that it's John Williams. Yeah. Um, I'm just going to come out and say Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon. I've never seen it. It's That's later. It's not uh, that. That's, that's not a stupid guess, though. Nope, not at all. Uh, the... I, I didn't think it was that that early, so... Yeah, I, th- I think it's 2001. Yeah, it is 2001. Yeah. Would it help you if I told uh, you that the uh, the length of the movie is 136 minutes? <laughs> Not at all? Oh, oh! <laughs> I was gonna say, I really hope he just nails it right now. Um, well, I'll read you the review. It's not very big. It's a long but absorbing tale of Austrian mountaineer adventurer Heinrich Herrer, whose attempt to scale a formidable Himalayan mountain peak in 1939 is interrupted by World War II. The movie is, of course, Seven Years, years in, in Tibet. Tibet. Free Tibet. Free Tibet. Hey, China. Free Tibet? I'll take it. China, I have something you may want. That's right. <laughs> All, All the, the tea. tea. Alright, so, Scott, one for you, you son of a bitch. Like I said, I gotta decimate Alex to restore my honor. That's true. Okay, you gotta look away again. Alex, I'm sorry can... you have to be the victim of this. You gotta look away. Gotta load up my categories. My cats. Um, okay, Alex, again to you, um, I'm going to say Getting Jilly With It. <laughs> Those are movies where Jake Gyllenhaal has sex. <laughs> um, uh, Deep Blue Sea, which are movies that have Deep Blue or Sea in the title. Fair enough. Or uh, also celebrating a birthday today uh, is uh, Nick Nolte. So, Nick Nolte movies. Oh, I held you back. That was seems like he's in pain. He is in pain. Uh, Deep Blue Sea. Deep Blue Sea. Which, of course, is a wonderful movie. Starring Kelly's favorite actor, Tom Jane. I was going to say LL Cool J. LL is pretty goddamn awesome. All right, would you like one from uh, 1997, 1999, no, sorry, 1997, 1998, or 2004? Uh, let me think. Hmm. 2004. <laughs> Okay, Scott, you back up. I have I have preliminary thoughts about this, but I would like to hear some stuff. Okay, this movie okay. from 2004 that has deep blue or C in the title. Uh, two and a half stars. Um, Leonard says about this film that... Uh, um, oh, man, this is... Um, he says that the main act, the main character has a self-conscious device that enables grown-up character name to confront himself as a boy, all of which creates distance between the audience and the inherent emotion uh, of the story. Um, the main actor uh, co-wrote and co-produced the film. Um... I can't say a lot about it because anything else I say about it is going to give away a major thing in the story. But it, it, it's, yeah. Two, four, six, eight, nine names. Hmm. <laughs> uh, read that description again. Sorry, sorry. Okay, um. The, okay, so. Um, the character, the main character has a self-conscious device that enables grown up, the, the grown up version of himself to confront himself as a boy, uh, all of which creates distance between the audience and the inherent emotion of the story. Uh, the main actor, um, he was the, he also co-wrote and co-produced the film. And it's two and a half stars, has deep blue or C in the title, and you've got nine names. Nine. 
Eight. Seven. Seven, you say. It seemed to work out decently well when you didn't have the top two last time. So let's give this one a whirl again. Name that movie. Okay, Alex, you're seven of nine. Are... Ha <laughs> It happened. You're, you're a wiener. William Ulrich, Peter Sinsati, uh, Caroline Aaron, Greta Scacchi, Brenda Blinth, Bob Hoskins, and John Goodman. Those were largely unhelpful. <laughs> yeah, well, it's what happens when Bob Hoskins and John Goodman are character actors in a lot of movies. Yeah. And everyone else had a weird name. Uh, well, German, Italian, regular, Italian, <laughs> regular. <laughs> that... That description completely threw me. Well, the problem is I can't say a lot, because if I say a lot, it gives away... No, no, I know. Just the, like, confronting himself as a child, I'm like, what the fuck was that movie? No, I can't think of anything. Well... Not either. Okay, well, the top two build are Kate Bosworth and Kevin Spacey. Oh, it was what I was thinking. See, it would have helped if I had seen it, but I didn't know that, uh... Bobby Darren confront themselves about? Is that what it's about, or am I, I, I totally think it out means that in the movie he yeah. can confront, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, Beyond the Sea. Beyond the Sea. Which was what I first thought, and that, which which I guess proves always go with what you think, because when you said 2004, I'm like, alright, Beyond the Sea. Then that description, I'm like, that can't be it. Well, it like, the thing is, it uses biopic, it uses singing, and like yeah. production numbers, and it also says that Kevin Spacey does all of his own singing quite well. Yeah, that definitely... In this Labor of Love project. Yeah. So, it doesn't help when I can't say a lot from the thing. Yeah. Alex, it's, Alex had a short straw on that one. Yeah. It is It is Bobby Darren, though, right? Am I it's correct? Bobby Darren. Yeah, okay. Uh, I wouldn't have gotten the name of every single oh. thing you said except for the title. That's a, <laughs> that's a shame. Not, I don't know a lot of people who have seen the movie, so. Yeah. Alright, you gotta lay down, man. You oh, I gotta lay down. Alright, and it goes back to Alex. Um, Hooray! <laughs> strategy <laughs> is paying it's off. Okay, uh, would you like Ghost Dad, which is a film where somebody speaks to their dead father? I really was hoping it was <laughs> films with Ghost Dad in them. <laughs> <laughs> um, Twoop Relief, which is movies where somebody has a conversation while pooping, whether it be in person or on the phone. Or would you like... Uh, let's see what else I got. That's a good one. Okay, this one is, uh, It Was a Struggle. Uh, this is a movie that I saw three times in theaters, and I fell asleep all three times. In the theater? In the theater. Oh my god! And then the first time I watched it on DVD, I also fell asleep. <laughs> because <laughs> it is not that good. Fell asleep three times in the theater. Theater. I can't even believe this. Paid for it twice, got paid for me once. I can't even believe this turn of events. I'm going to go with that one. Yes, uh, thank you. All right. <laughs> we have to I'll find out what this is. I'm just intrigued to know what they are. So. I know, right? Like, this is unprecedented. <laughs> no one has ever fallen asleep in the theater for the same movie three times. Ever. Uh, okay. Um... I hope I also hope you have a choice of like five movies. So like, yeah, we got two thousand four, two thousand eight. So this I fall asleep a lot. I have narcolepsy. I should have mentioned that. <laughs> okay, this movie is from two thousand and seven. Uh, one and a half stars, which judging by me falling asleep four times is one and a half stars too is many. One and a half stars too many. <laughs> um, <laughs> I wish I could read the very very first line of it because it is hilarious, but it will give it away. Um. It's convoluted and interminable. Oh, interminable. Uh, in it is uh, it is just another soulless product, offering precious little 
Joy de, vi- de Vivre. Joie de Vivre. Joie de Vivre. <laughs> My French is horrible. <laughs> um, offering precious little Joy de Vivre or entertainment despite the almost non-stop action. Um, and there is one cameo that he mentions that I can't say. Hmm. Uh, and it has 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12 names. I have a decent thought about this. We'll see how this plays out. So, Alex, yeah, it's uh, to you. Convoluted uh, story. It's got nonstop action, but it's got no entertainment, apparently. Okay, um, 12. 11. 10. 9. I deviated from the strategy. Oh. 9 of 12? All right. All right. 2, 4, 6, 8, 9. Your names are Keith Richards, Ch- Chow Yun Fat, Stellan Skarsgård, Mackenzie Crook, Lee Ehrenberg, Jonathan Price, Bill Nye, Jack Davenport, All and right. Kieran Knightley. Well, it's, yeah, it's a matter of getting the right one. Yes. So, cinematic runtime of 169 minutes. That's long. Jesus fucking Christ. Probably why I fell asleep three times. Okay, so... First one was 2003. So if they did them every two years, this is the third one. I'm not even sure how many there are. There's, there's four, four, and the fifth one comes out next summer. There's four? Yeah. I thought it was three. Nope. There's four. The the four, the fourth one had didn't have uh, Orlando Bloom or Kieran Knightley in it. Yeah. And it was just Johnny Depp. And then there's another one coming. Man, up. you're really talking about this like yeah, like I've already answered hey. it. <laughs> you know what well, it is, you wiener. I know what it is. It's just a matter of which uh, if it's two or three. And then there, yeah. Sorry, there's a fourth one, fifth one coming out next summer. And they're tentatively planned to do an additional two more after that one. Holy shit. Johnny Depp signed on for four more, five more after the first three. They were all horrible after the first one, right? Uh, second one's got its moments. Yeah, but anyway. The fourth okay. one is a trope. I should probably answer uh, Pirates of the Caribbean at World's End. Is that correct? That is the one. Thank you. At World's End. Fell asleep four times. Th- and that's number, that's number three, that right? That's the third one? That's the third one. Yeah. Did, was, was there a... Uh, no, it's not got its moments, Andrew. The third one. No, I said and the second. I said. Away a bit. I said the second one has its moments. Yes. He gave yes, the. You wouldn't fall asleep in it. Yes. He, he, he <laughs> gave. Times. He gave the first one two and a half stars. He gave the second one two stars. He gave the third one one and a half stars. So he's going down one half star. Every half time. star every time. And he gave the fourth one. Two stars. So oh, he back went, up. He went back up half a star. That's probably inaccurate. Maybe because it was directed by a different person. Maybe. I've seen the first two. I've tried to watch the third one a few times, and I don't think I've got all the way through it in a single sitting ever. I, I I think I'm in the exact same position as you, Alex. I think I've seen the first two and I haven't bothered with the entirety of three yet. You're not missing much there, bro. Apparently not. I, uh... I think I won. You did. Huh. It's exciting. Ale- Alex, I apologize. It was not personal. I, I it, you spanked it, his face. It was a matter of honor. Oh, this uh, this podcast shall henceforth be named Alex does not hard move. <laughs> <laughs> it's not the truth. Um, and I lied. Tentatively planned for summer twenty fifteen is Pirates Five. Wow. And the only cast that it has are Johnny Depp, Penelope Cruz, and Jeffrey Rush. Huh. The only people who have reprised their roles... In all of them? In all of them except for Nelly Cruz, because she was only in the last one. Right. And you hate her. I do hate her. And your fact. father hates her. And my father hates her. Sometimes my father and I get together and just hate her together. <laughs> <laughs> well, that concludes our game for this evening. Good stuff. It is, what, coming on... 2 a.m. Gr- Greenwich oh, yeah. Mean Time. That's not bad. It's better than before where you were up till like 5. <laughs> yeah. 
I appreciate the, uh, the midnight start isn't too bad. Yeah, not so, too bad. Yeah, we're, we're saying, like, on a, on a weekday, no matter how early we start, it is still late for you. <laughs> Okay, but thanks for thanks for staying up. Thanks for playing. Thanks for being our seventh different host of. Don't know that we're gonna the Leonard Mullen game. Seven. I don't can't imagine we're gonna have eight considering Pos- we haven't had anybody else on here. Possibly the seventh and final, the last ever, the Highlander. The Highlander of, <laughs> of hosts. You should uh, you should do a, a a Doug Benson and, and get Leonard on the podcast. <laughs> we should try to get Leonard. I'm sure that Leonard would love to come on a podcast that rips off another podcast that he's been on. At some dude's house in Vancouver. <laughs> Maybe we should change the name of this game to the, Rick, the Robert Roper? Robert Roper game. Robert Roper game. <laughs> Rob Ro. Rob Rop. Although, to be fair, there are thousands of uh, movie critics out there, and Leonard Malton is the most attractive looking of all of them. He also yeah. seems like he's the coolest one. Yeah, he does seem pretty cool. Actually, uh, Gene Siskel was cool. But then uh, I guess. Ebert murdered him. <laughs> yes, yes. And then uh, God murdered Ebert. Wait, his face. Anyway. Oh, I was gonna say he's dead. <laughs> nah, I get. Who, who in the nineteen eighties? If you like made a bet in the eighties that Ebert was gonna outlive Siskel, you would have made so much money because the odds on that would have been astronomical. Yeah, absolutely. And it brought that to a halt. All right. Are you, uh, are you guys aware of uh, a British person called Charlie Brooker? Uh, sounds sounds somewhat familiar. I'm f- I'm familiar with Jimmy Carr. That's not the same person. You should no, that's no one is. <laughs> Charlie Brooker, you should definitely seek out. Yeah. Um, because he's a fantastic. Uh, Human being? Just a person in general. He, uh, yeah, he uh, rips apart things in a way which is just, just brilliant. I enjoy I'm, I'm going to uh, forward you a link that you can read at your leisure. Excellent. And you should see custom videos. Alright, we'll check them out. I enjoy the ripping apart of things in amusing ways. <laughs> well, there we go. I guess we're, uh, we're all wrapped up here. I think so. Uh, so, Alex, you'd better think of a shithead and don't say yourself, because that's... Yeah, Alex actually on Facebook named a shithead earlier today. Spoiler, it was Scott Henson. <laughs> <laughs> but hopefully he... On something. <laughs> hopefully he has another one now, because my heart can't take it a second time. Uh, uh, I'm going to name... I think I'm going to name... Fucking. Fucking. <laughs> uh, I'll just go ahead and and name who was that person? Uh, Kevin Spacey. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's fair. Huh? I. Because for being in a film that I wouldn't have guessed, even if I knew every single detail about it. <laughs> Huh. Title. Well, <laughs> and look it up on Netflix and then watch it and not enjoy it. That's two and a half stars. It'll be fine. Yeah, Leonard, Leonard's okay with it, I guess. It's better than Batman Returns, then, I guess, supposedly. Yeah. It is totally not better than Batman Returns, well, by the way. It's not even close, but... By the, by the way, I want to bring up the fact that his rankings for all the Batman films are really strange. Oh, they're totally weird. Like, he, uh, I think he rates, like, Batman Forever above Batman. Like yeah, it's it's retarded. Leonard has his Leonard has weird days. Leonard again. Leonard is a drunk. He is a full on <laughs> drunk. Okay, so Batman gets two and a half stars. Batman and Robin also gets two and a half stars. Oh my god, are you serious? Yeah. Uh, Batman Begins gets three stars. Batman Forever also gets three stars. Uh, Batman Returns gets two stars. Those are... Uh, I don't know if this has Dark Knight in it. Uh, probably would. That is, that is a weirdo ranking system. Th- those are, dare I say, batshit insane yeah. ratings. You mean the pun. I mean the pun. <laughs> uh, Scott, you got shit in? Uh, yeah, uh, Hank Azaria and Wes Studi's film relationship is a shithead. 
Uh, mine is uh, the uh, I don't I can't remember the exact title, but uh, the people who are in charge of selecting the nominations for the Oscars are a shithead. Is it the Academy it of Arts and Sciences? Is that what it is? Yeah, the I Academy so. of Arts and Sciences is a shithead. Yeah, I'm with you. 